Hello everybody and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to use a daylight sensor as a switch to get an output. So you can right click on it to change its status and this contraption over here will give you an output which you can hook up to a door or whatever you want this thing to interact with. And Cubehamster is here with me today. How are you doing Yo. guy? Uh, good man. <laughs> Cool, yep, this was an idea that I had, and as soon as I had it, I knew I wouldn't be able to do the redstone, and I'd have to call in the help of an expert. So Cube has put this thing together right here for us. Do you want to explain how it works? Yeah, sure. Um, if you look behind you, you'll see uh, we have uh, two daylight sensors hooked up, one in the night state and one in the day state, and we have command blocks cycling the day-night cycle rather quickly at the moment. Yes. Um, but basically what happens with the new daylight sensor, the inverted uh, state is literally the inverted state of the, the day uh, sensor. Um, so the total of both the uh, daylight sensors will always come down to, uh, to 15, like they really um, fill each other up in that aspect. And yeah. you can kind of use that. Uh, so we have the input mechanism here and there's like depending on, on, uh, on what time of day and what state it in, there's always two things that can happen. Either the signal strength coming from the daylight sensor is going to be uh, eight or more, or it's going to be seven or less, like regardless of what state it is. Um, it can, but it can never be uh, like both at the same time, depending on the state. So what you can do is, if you we have a hopper here that transmits exactly a signal strength seven, and we're subtracting. Um, so what, what will happen is we will either get uh, uh, a positive signal strength or we will get a negative or basically a zero signal strength. And whenever we flick it, it's going to like change. It, it's going to change. So it's going to go either on from on to off or from off to on. And we have hooked this mechanism up to a, a dual edge detector, uh, which gives a little pulse whenever it goes from on to off or from off to on. It just it just made a little pulse then as well, didn't yeah. it? Because it'll do it at every... I'm not sure what time of day it is, but when it passes over that point between 7 and 8, this thing is going to create a yeah. signal. Yeah. And then and that's that, why you have all of this on this. the other side as well. Exactly, exactly. That's why we have the second circuit here. Uh, and the second circuit is just so that uh, during the day, like I said, like we said, we don't know the exact time, but whenever it goes from uh, signal strength 8 to 7 or from 7 to 8, this little circle is going to also send a little pulse there to it counteract. It just to did counteract, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To counteract the pulse from, uh, yeah, from our input mechanism, so it doesn't fire, uh, uh, like uh, when you don't want it to. Exactly. And it's a little bit big at the moment, isn't it? But it does exactly what it's supposed to. It does it yeah. flawlessly, actually. Yeah. Um, but we we wanted to see if you guys had any ideas on compacting this because you can see it's doable in survival, but a little impractical. It's a big thing to build. For just you know a little right click you know to open a door or something like that so if any of you have ideas be sure to share them with us on how we could possibly compact this it's very fancy though I mean it is <laughs> <laughs> to build this contraption you are going to need an area of land that is four blocks wide and 17 blocks deep you can see here I have highlighted with dark gray wall the areas that you're actually going to be building in and the red block here represents the input so if you go up by two blocks place the daylight sensor, that's going to be your input and you can see that this will be flush with the ground so it means all you have to do is find your ground level and then dig down by two blocks now there's a green block over here that represents the output so that's where you'll wire this up to a door or whatever it is it's going to activate so in this chest we have the materials that you'll need to build this we will need eight building blocks seven pieces of redstone 13 redstone comparators you're going to need six hoppers, four of them We'll just have one item inside and the other two will have this amount of items in them as well and I'll point that out when we're doing the tutorial as well as that you're going to need four droppers three daylight sensors and a redstone torch so let's start this off by placing the input we're going to put a block down a piece of redstone on top of it and then our daylight sensor at the top there then we want to put a hopper at the back here just facing into the ground and inside this one we want to put those items like we talked about earlier and then in front of that we're going to have a comparator piece of redstone in front of it and then a comparator pointing out at this block from which our input comes through and we want to put that one on subtract mode then over here we want to place three blocks like so have a comparator here facing in that direction a piece of redstone between these two blocks and on the side of this one we want to have a redstone torch then here what we want to do is place two droppers facing forward 
put two hoppers facing into them like this and in each of those we just want to put a single item like so. Then over here we're going to have two comparators facing in that direction. We're going to put a block at the back, a piece of redstone in front of it, another comparator here and then that's going to be our output but this comparator needs to be in subtract mode. So now we're going to build the other half of the circuit. We want to start off by placing a hopper facing into the ground and inside of that we're going to place our items like so. And then on either side we need a daylight sensor. This one over here needs to be inverted and then we'll place three comparators in a row and then another two, both of which need to be on subtract mode. Then you need to place a piece of redstone in the middle and another piece over here and then put down two blocks, one there and one here. Then we need to put a dropper facing in this direction, another one facing in that direction, and then place two hoppers facing into the droppers and put a single item in each of those. And then facing out from the hoppers, we need a comparator and another one there, then a block in front of this one and a piece of redstone on this one. So sunset and sunrise is when this thing will work. If we have a look down here, it's going to cancel itself out. There we go. So you can see we have built this correctly. And if we go and press this, you can see the comparator activating, giving us an output. So that's how you build the contraption. And again, a big thanks to Cube Hamster. He built all of this. It was just my idea. He put it into action. So if you want to check him out, he is a redstone expert. There'll be a link to his channel in the description box down below. But that is it for this tutorial. If you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like. It will always be appreciated. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.